What's up plant lovers, Devin is here. And as you probably know, I garden in Westchester, Pennsylvania, zone 6B, and where I live, I have pretty intense clay soil. So this video is gonna be dedicated to 40 plants that you can grow well in clay soils. So if you have clay soil, you definitely know it's pretty difficult to work with um, when it gets really wet, it expands, when it gets really dry, it shrinks, and when it's so dry, you really can hardly even dig through it unless you're using a pickaxe. So out of this list of 40 plants, I actually grow 30 of them at my garden. Um, the other 10 I'm looking to hopefully add in the next uh, couple of seasons or so. And I have divided this list of 40 plants into four different categories. The first would be showy perennials that are kind of like thematic plants um, that really bring color and flowers to the garden. Uh, the second category would be fruiting plants and trees, which I think every garden should have something that provides something you can eat. Um, the third category would be shrubs. And the fourth category would be ground covering perennial plants. All right, so stick with me as we go through this list. I'm gonna to try to go through it a little bit quickly so that this video doesn't end up being an hour and a half long, which it easily could. Anyways, let's start the show with Monarda or Bee Balm. I like to call this a bit of a renaissance plant because it does so many different wonderful things in the garden. First and foremost, it has beautiful bright colored flowers that last at least about four to six weeks each summer. Uh, furthermore, they're very highly attractive to pollinators such as bees and butterflies, but they also provide tons of wonderful medicinal qualities um, if you are interested in using your plants in a medicinal way. Monarda is a great plant. The next one is a personal favorite. This is Alcamilla mollis or the ladies mantle plant. This has a one, this could also, also be in the ground cover um, section that we're gonna be talking about later, but it has this wonderful scalloped leaves that look fantastic at the front of the garden border. They're great in the sun, they're great in the shade, and they spread very nicely, creating a wonderful dense growth habit wherever you may be planting them. The next one up is a clematis. Um, there's lots of different types of clematis out there that bloom in the early summer, the midsummer, the early autumn, different colors, different size flowers. And when you grow a clematis well, there's really truly no better vine out there. Next up would be Asclepius or butterfly weed. Um, or uh, swamp milkweed, all of the different species of Asclepius tend to do quite well in clay soils. Most of us know by now that this genus Asclepius is the genus that supports, uh, that it acts as a host plant for the monarch butterflies. Without Asclepius, there would be no monarch, monarchs. So plant some of them to enjoy the beautiful blooms and help the monarch population grow a little bit more. Next up would be echinacea or cone flowers. These days there's so many great varieties, cultivars out there, lots of different colors, some that are even double flower blooms. Now, while cone flowers are relatively short-lived perennials, only living around three to five years, they are a boon for the pollinators and wildlife in the wintertime as well. Here we have Coreopsis or tick seed. This is another member of the Asteraceae aster family. I personally grow the solar series, which is uh, it really takes your Coreopsis to the next level. These are long blooming, low maintenance, and very bright colored flowers. I love all Phlox, but Phlox paniculata are probably my favorite. And of the Phlox paniculata, the Gina cultivar is a wonderful plant, does fantastic in clay soils. It is an absolute magnet for the pollinators. The fragrance is to die for. Phlox paniculata, always a great choice, and they live for decades. Okay, peonies, what more do I need to say? They deter deer, they live for decades. The flowers are voluptuous and beautiful. If you wanna try a better peony, try growing the Ito peonies. They have a woody stem, so they actually handle the spring weather even better than typical uh, Paeonia lactiflora or the traditional garden peonies. Redbeckia is another late season bloomer. They are great for the pollinators. They provide seeds for the birds in the winter time, and they provide gorgeous color right as we're transitioning into autumn as the leaves are changing colors. It's an easy choice, very high impact, low maintenance. I like the cultivar American Gold Rush. 
When it comes to geranium, hardy geraniums, there's tons of different hybrids out there. I personally love the species, uh, the geranium maculatum or the geranium macrorhizum for creating really rich, dense coverage in the sun or the part shade gardens. Uh, but if you're looking for a little bit more showy flowers, some of the newer cultivars are fantastic. Now, the daylilies are a great choice for some of the worst soils. If you have heavy clay, daylilies are still going to perform. Lots of different colors, some are fragrant, many that rebloom for months on end, and um, they do take a few years to really get established, but once they do, they just provide beauty from late spring to autumn, year in and year out. Next up is Liatris, or Liatris um, the purple gay feather. Now, every garden should have some vertical life growing up, this is an easy choice to grow because it has kind of a grass-like foliage and then those purple flowers just sort of spring up out of nowhere in the middle of summer right when you need them. Russian sage is one of the most drought tolerant plants you can grow. They're such a cinch to take care of. They have a minty fragrance that deters pests like rabbits, voles, or deer and they bloom for months on end every single summer. If you're looking for a stalwart in your shade garden, look no further than astilbes. I have them growing all over my shady gardens because they grow for a very long time. They provide a wonderful structure, a nice, rich, dense coverage, even in relatively shaded areas of your gardens. Here we can see solidago or the golden rods. Now these have added a little bit of a resurgence in popularity lately as it's been discovered just how rich they are for the pollinators. They grow and bloom at the same time as our purple flowered asters, so they're a wonderful contrasting bloom companion plant for our asters and they are so low maintenance. Achillea or Achillea, these have wonderful brightly colored blooms. They're great in your hot sunny clay garden beds, very drought tolerant and there's lots of different species out there each that have a little bit different features, a little bit different heights, a little bit different foliage styles. I'm sure you can find one that's perfect for you in your garden. Now my favorite iris would be iris germanica, the bearded iris, uh, because they really are the star of my late spring, early summer garden, but do make sure, plant a few different colors. Watch them bloom together, they'll create this symphony of color right as your summer is getting started. All right, now on to the fruiting and edible section. First up would be malice or apples. Um, both the edible apples as well as crab tree apples which provide beautiful flowers in the early springtime. If you have at least an acres garden, you should have at least one fruit bearing tree and apple is a great choice for clay gardens. Next would be prunus or the cherry plum genus. Uh, we recently planted a number of ornamental cherries. We're looking to add an additional edible plum tree. There's lots of great trees out there but there's also wonderful shrubs in this genus which all tend to do relatively well in clay soils. Now I gotta say there's nothing better than picking some blackberries and raspberries right off the vine and popping them in your mouth in the middle of the summertime. And the genus Rubus or the Bramble genus is fantastic in your clay soils. They're a little bit wild, but they do provide a lot of fruit if you can get them before the animals do. All right, now we move on to the shrub section of the list. And the first one up would be Forsythia. This is a set it and forget it kind of shrub. It lives for a very long time. It's so low maintenance. And when the Forsythia is in bloom in your springtime with those bright, beautiful yellow flowers, you know warm weather is on the horizon. We also know the old saying, when the Forsythia is in bloom, that's when it's time to prune your roses. Which brings us to the next one on the list, which would be roses. Roses do quite well in your clay soils. Of course, there's millions of different kinds of roses out there. Um, I like to do some of the shrub roses that have fragrance. They can be a little bit more challenging to find, but if you have the right plant purveyor, like my family, Roberta's Gardens, you can always find the very best roses available. However, if you do have Japanese beetles that wreak havoc in your area, that can be a little bit of a downer, I gotta admit from experience. So viburnum could be its own video in and of itself. It's gotta be one of the very best genus of shrubs out there. They do fantastic in your clay soils. There's so many different wonderful viburnum that are gonna bring beautiful interest, you know, spring, summer, fall, winter time in your garden. Some of my personal favorites are brandywine. I love classic Korean spice. Um, I love arrowwoods, and I also love the gigantic Mari SEI viburnum. It is an absolute beauty to have in any moderately sized garden. 
Here we can see spirea. These are lovely structural shrubs. They're very easy to grow, very easy to incorporate into any planting scheme, any shrub border. Um, the flowers are lovely. The plants have a nice rounded growth. And for me personally, they remind me of spending the summer in the Alps where they grow all over the place wild. Very cool. So willows or the salix, both the shrubs and the trees are very much at home in clay soils. Now, if you choose some of the bright stemmed uh, shrubs, of the willows, they will be the highlight of your winter garden. Bright reds and yellows and oranges, they are phenomenal to see. Now, I love Amsonia. While it's not technically a shrub, it, it definitely is a herbaceous perennial. It does play more of a role like a shrub with this nice billowy form and it sways in the wind. It's really gorgeous, low maintenance, and it brings wonderful flowers in the springtime, lovely uh, foliage in the summertime, and then an autumnal change of the foliage color in the autumn. Okay, so the next would be grasses. I know this is a little bit vague, but if you find some grasses that are native to your region, they'll do great in your garden. Um, th there's just too many to mention, and it probably should be a whole video on, in and of itself. All right, so the genus Cornus, or the dogwood genus, is full of wonderful shrubs and trees and even ground covers, and they all do quite well in your clay gardens. Now, just do a little research. I'm sure you'll find one that is perfect for you in your size garden. Now, like many of you, you probably have awesome memories attached to the lilac or syringa genus. They're very long-lived, they're very drought tolerant, very low maintenance, and their flowers are some of the most heavily scented in the world. Um, there's some that grow huge, there's others, new ones out there that stay quite small. So lots of different options in sizes as well as colors available in today's gardening world. Now one shrub that packs a punch would be Potentilla with their bright yellow flowers. This is one that I don't have in my garden yet, but I'm looking to add one soon. They have a gorgeous rounded shrub form with lots of yellow flowers all over the place. I love them. Now where I garden, Aronia is native to my area and I just have planted one over the last few months and I'm really excited to see it grow and take off because it provides multi-season interest and it has these wonderful berries that are in fact edible. And when I was living in Vienna, I actually bought some Aronia berry jam, which it wasn't that great, honestly, I gotta tell the truth, um, but I actually planted it primarily for berry production for the birds. So it's wonderful your wildlife and it has um, an awesome natural effect where you, wherever you may be planting it. Now the last shrub on the list would be Rose of Sharon or Hibiscus syriacus. Um, the, the hibiscus flower is iconic because it's beautiful. And in today's world, you can find blue, you can find purple, you can find red, you can find white, you can find pink, lots of different colors out there. Some are even double flowered blooms. The one thing I do find a lot of gardeners um, kind of make an error with is that these plants get quite large, so you gotta give them enough space to grow. I'm actually growing them as a hedge on the underside of my deck, where they're just filling out nicely and beautifully, producing wonderful flowers every summer. All right, so now on to the ground covering perennials. Now the first one would be Con Convalaria majalis, or Lily of the Valley. Now these ones can definitely be a little bit aggressive if you plant them um, where there are other plants you're trying to get established. So, Beware of that. However, if you do plant them in a rather shady area where you allow them to just kind of roam freely, there's really nothing better out there. Um, and they also have some wonderful flowers that are greatly fragrant as well. All right, coral bells. I love my coral bells. I have them planted all around the front entrance of my home because they're so charming. Different colors, I have like caramels and peaches and yellows and purples and they just look good from spring to summer to fall, even in through winter. Definitely coral bells is perfect in any clay garden beds. Now one sort of secret ground cover out there that you really only see in botanical gardens would be this guy, Epimedium. By far my favorite ground cover. If I'm looking for something with really dense growth that no weeds will grow in. These will do very well under the shade of trees, even in dry shade. And there's lots of different species out there and many of which produce some relatively unique flowers. All right, so Helleborus, Helleborus, 
These evergreen plants are another one of my favorites um, at my garden in Chester County, Pennsylvania, uh, because they are evergreen all year round, so they keep that interest really nice and high throughout the year. And then they have those wonderful nodding flowers uh, in, in my garden in rich purples and kind of mauves and pinks um, right around the beginning of spring. So it's really one of the very first flowers that I have in my garden. Now, if deer weren't a problem where I lived, I would grow a million hostas. They have some of the largest leaves of any herbaceous perennials, and they have a wonderful energy to boot. However, deers do love to eat them. So next it would be Lamium. Make sure you opt for the species Maculatum. There's another species out there which you can find that's quite aggressive and a little bit invasive, so stay away from that one. But the Maculatum species provides wonderful dense rich coverage in your shady gardens and its bright silver foliage will absolutely brighten up those shady nooks. So Solomon Seal is a plant I could easily imagine growing at Snow White's garden. It's just, it just has this wonderful woodland natural effect. They provide dense coverage once they really get established and they have these little pendulous white flowers that kind of resemble a lily of the valley in fact. All right and last but not least would be hardy sedum or stone crop. This is one of the very best um, succulent ground covers that does spread quite well. Um, if you're really looking to cover some ground quickly opt for hardy sedum. There's lots of different colors, different uh, variations of foliage something to suit every gardener's delight. But do beware, they will tend to kind of spread um, just naturally over time. So it is one thing to be aware of. All right, gardeners, and with that, now we have taken a quick look at 40 different awesome perennial plants for gardens that are embedded with clay soil. If you garden in clay as well, and you have any suggestions, any other plants that you absolutely love, or any other cultural care techniques that you think other gardeners that garden on clay should know, please make sure to leave those comments down in the comment section below. Don't forget, subscribe to this video, give it a little like if you did enjoy the content, and make sure to stay tuned as we're bringing new plant-related content every single week. Thank you guys for joining me here on Plant Vibrations. I'll catch you soon. Ciao.